Before we jump into this video, have you downloaded my Gear Vault yet? If not, it's free for iOS and Android. It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear. And if you don't have insurance to protect your gear, well, you can get a quote right inside the app. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a review, unboxing, and sniff test of this 90mm f2 Fuji lens that also is an RLM for linear motors and a WR lens, which is for weather resistance. Now let's unbox it and see what's in the box and talk about who it's... Oh, yes! Man, Fuji should go into business making maracas. La cucarachas. Look, that's the only song I know with, a, anyway, get out of here. Stuff, papers, another bag for your lens that you'll probably never use, though it looks like a nice bag. Piece of cardboard, another piece of cardboard. Oh, whoa, lens hood weighs nothing. And this is the lens. So here it is. It's got some heft to it. It kind of feels like they're larger 50 to 140 because it has some heft to it. Now the 35 millimeter equivalent of this lens is a 137 millimeter lens. This is $949. Now keep in mind that Fuji doesn't make a full frame body, so they make smaller lenses that can be less expensive and still be really good. This is a very limiting lens. Now being that it's 90 millimeters, it's not gonna zoom in at all. You have to move your feet. Now, I took this lens out to the zoo as well as to the skate park to get some portraits, to get some nature photos, and try to see how the bokeh was going to look. Now, one thing that's curious about this lens is that it doesn't have OIS for the optical image stabilization. That would be something that would be nice in a lens like this, but again, on the Nikon side, you have something like a 105 1.4 that doesn't have VR. It would probably make the lens much more expensive as well as heavy. Now the R on the lens stands for the aperture ring that you can control right here. I am still not a big fan of having this on my lenses, but Fuji offers that for people who like to go ahead and manually switch their lenses so they can feel like they're back in 1962, though they should probably get with the times. Just put it on A, and then you can control it with the camera. But be careful that you don't accidentally switch it. Now this lens's aperture ring feels a lot tighter than some of the other lenses that I played with from Fuji, so I don't think you're gonna accidentally switch this one, though it could happen. But now, it's time for the sniff test. with a little bit of a tongue test in there. So what's it smell like? A tortoise. Why does it smell like a tortoise? Because it's so freaking slow when it comes to autofocus. I took some portraits out at the skate park and it took me a while to hunt to get the focus. It was moving super slow, reminiscent of something like the 85-1-2 on the Canon side, it was really slow when it was trying to find the focus, but once I did it, it nailed it right on the eye, and you can see that the image looks nice and sharp, nice and colorful, there's nice tones. Now in terms of the bokeh, you can see some of the bird shots that I took where the bird looks very nice, and the background is super buttery and clean. The greens of the trees in the background look really nice. So at F2, you're getting a very nice effect. So let me show you what the zoom range looks like. Here's a picture at 90. Looks good at 90. Now let's, let's zoom in a little and see what 90 looks like. Yeah, that's another one at 90 as well. That's right, it doesn't zoom. So it's a prime. Super duper sharp, super duper colorful, nice contrast, nice bokeh, but really slow. So it's really not gonna do great for action sports. It would be cool for video if you're locked off and doing a video interview. It would be good for just about any portrait that you're looking to do though. Now I did some test shots against the brick wall so you can see what it looks like at F2. The lines are nice and straight, looks nice and sharp throughout the middle and you can also see it at F8. And I wanna remind you that you can download these raw files over on the website, the link is up on the screen, so that you can pixel peep and see if you like the quality that you're getting out of this lens. Now in terms of how close you can get to the subject for focus, you have a two foot focusing distance, so if you get closer than that, not gonna focus, so stay at two feet or further. And that's pretty much it. I, I liked it for shooting portraits, except it seemed a little too slow 
for most things, it should, in this day and age, I shouldn't have to wait for the lens to do this. Especially this is LR. This has linear motors. Lin-Manuel Miranda. It's, it was in Hamilton. It wasn't actually in Hamilton, but I would expect it to be a little faster. So keep that in mind if you're looking at this lens. And don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button so that people see that you actually like me. And uh, if you want to check out some other videos, click on the screen right here. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya.